Hello everyone. Now we know the functions of different regions of brain and how the reflex actions are executed without the involvement of brain. So we know the spinal cord executes many actions just like the brain but these executions are faster. The spinal cord is also the part of our central nervous system along with the brain. Do you think the brain is more important than the spinal cord? Let us see. Leonardo da Vinci and Stephen Hales recorded the survival of a frog without the brain. But the animal died as soon as the spinal cord was damaged. This means spinal cord must be controlling some very vital functions in our body. You know the nerves attached to the spinal cord have two types of connections or roots. One to the back or dorsal side of the spinal cord and the other to the front or the ventral side of the spinal cord. When Charles Bell and Francois Magen die, cut off dorsal roots, they saw no reaction was there. But a simple touch to the ventral roots caused muscle twitch violently. So, they suggested that the ventral root carried the instruction of muscle contraction outwards whereas the dorsal root carried the message of sensation inwards. Our central nervous system is well protected. But there are nerves and ganglia outside the brain and spinal cord. Just like the dorsal and ventral root nerve cell heads in the spinal cord. Now, what do you mean by the term ganglia? A ganglion is a group of nerve cell bodies. To be specific, a ganglion houses the cell bodies of afferent nerves and efferent nerves. As you can see, these nerves connect the brain and the spinal cord to the sensory organs such as eye and ear and to the other organs of the body muscles, blood vessels and glands. Also, these nerves are not well protected unlike in the case of central nervous system. You know, all the nerves in the body that lie outside of the spinal cord and brain form the peripheral nervous system. These nerves carry information to and from the central nervous system to the rest of the body and provide complex body functions. When we enter a dark room, the pupil in our eyes expands to allow more light to come in. When we get back to the lighted area, the pupil shrinks. This adjustment of pupil diameter happens involuntarily and is controlled by peripheral nervous system. Few nerves in the peripheral nervous system also help in voluntary action as it relays signal from the brain to the muscles. Now, how does medulla oblongata controls breathing, heartbeat etc? Well, the peripheral nervous system helps it to perform this involuntary activities. So the peripheral nervous system connects the medulla oblongata to the main organs of the body. So in short, we can say the peripheral nervous system helps in controlling autonomous activities of organs and also the voluntary actions. So to sum up what we learned today, in human beings or we can say in vertebrates, the nervous system consists of two main parts. The central nervous system that is CNS and the peripheral nervous system that is PNS. The central nervous system consists of the brain and spinal cord whereas the peripheral nervous system consists of the nerves and ganglia outside of the brain and spinal cord and regarding the peripheral nervous system it carries information to and from the central nervous system to provide complex body functions and the PNS consists of 12 pairs of cranial nerves and 31 pairs of spinal nerves. You know, 
cranial nerves are those nerves which arise directly from the brain whereas the spinal nerves are those nerves that arise from the spinal cord so that was all about peripheral nervous system and we shall understand more about it in the next class until then bye bye